Hi everybody, today I want to talk a bit about throwers and this is an impromptu video I thought I'd make, just something that I was always kind of wondering when I first got uh, my first few flashlights and especially when you're just starting out and you're not sure what to get, sometimes you're just taking a guess. So I want to talk about the differences between these types of throwers, uh, their pros and cons and also go through my recommendations depending on what you're gonna use these for. Now, these flashlights are all made for a specific purpose, and that is to throw a long distance beam. So basically illuminate something from a distance, and they accomplish that through three different designs. So you can see here in terms of the lens, so here with the TIR flashlights, this over here is the Sofern IF22A, and it has, a lens, a polycarbonate lens. There is some glass actually protecting the lens that sits straight on top. It's always a good feature to have. TIR stands for total internal reflection. This lens is shaped specifically for this LED, sits on top, and it gathers all the light and projects it into a narrow sort of beam. So you've got the other, another one here. This is a smaller one, the Spiraz M4. Also accomplishes the same thing in just a smaller design, okay, it just uses a smaller battery, but other than that, it's quite similar, okay? One thing to remember with these is that they produce less spill. So when we talk about spill, it's basically any light that um, surrounds the hotspot. So normally with the flashlight beam, you're gonna have a really bright center spot, and on the external edges, it's gonna be softer and more diffused with less light. With TIR flashlights, you do get spill, but you can only access that on the medium to high modes, really. If you've got it on a really low mode, it's hard to see the spill, just due to the nature of how these lights are designed, mainly to focus all, most of that, the light into a narrow sort of beam, okay? So let's put that down there, and let's start talking about some of these ones in the middle. So these ones are basically your classic throwers that run and are designed um, with the reflector. And one of the things you'll notice straight away is that the reflector has a really smooth surface. And that's on purpose so that it reflects more of that light forward and also produces less diffusion. So you'll notice with some other flashlights that are more designed for a floody kind of beam, they have this kind of orange peel reflector design as you can see it's kind of like this mottled effect on the aluminium reflector inside okay you can see that in there okay whereas comparing it to something like this you can see there it's completely smooth so that's the convoy so this is the convoy c8 plus comes with a, quite a large diameter reflector Okay, and then you've got this one here, Workhost FC12. And it's a really small reflector, but the unique thing about it is that it's quite deep. So it actually goes all the way back there, nearly close to that button. And that's how it accomplishes significant throw, even though that smooth reflector is quite short. The LED sits further back in there. So something to look for if you're looking for a throwier small flashlight. Um, the beam is a little bit odd, I think a bit ringy around the edges, but it does what it needs to do. So I'm happy with it. One of my favorite little EDC throwers to carry around. Okay. The larger the head of the flashlight with any of these reflector ones, normally the larger the throw. Okay. This one here is a clear example. This is the Convoy L8. Comes with an SBT90 LED. Sits all the way back there. Gigantic reflector. This thing throws one and a half kilometers. Whereas you've got the C8 Plus, does about a kilometer. And this one here, the FC12, I think that does about four to 500 meters, which is still quite impressive. Okay. And you see that same pattern as well when you're looking at these TIR throwers. So, if you've got normally a larger head on the TIR thrower, it's going to produce a more narrow beam and it will be able to throw further, okay? And um, so these are a few other TIR flashlights, okay? And uh, some examples I thought I would show you. This is the Spiraz EST. We've got the 
Wubin C3 and the Sofern IF25A. Very small TIR lenses here in the top and they're probably also shaped differently so that they diffuse light. Um, I've never seen a TIR thrower with a small head like this. They always come in this design, larger head, roughly about four centimeters um, in diameter that you have to deal with. So these ones produce more of a floody, um, a floody sort of beam, okay? On the right hand side, we have got the strongest throwers in the bunch and packs a huge punch, especially for the size of some of these lights. So uh, basically here on the right hand side, these are all just next, these are a bunch of next torch. These are a bunch of next torch LEPs that I own. And um, let's pick up the big one. If we have a look, basically you can see this one here actually has a lens on the front of it, but uh, behind it, there is a convex lens. You can probably see it better can see it better on this one here, convex lens. Behind that lens, you have a little bit of round phosphor and behind that you've got the laser that passes through that then produces visible light. The light takes on similar properties in terms of the throw properties of laser. So it's really quite impressive. You've got a huge amount of throw for the size. Um, these days, the lights that throw the furthest are, you know, are most often LEP flashlights, unless, of course, you want to get a very, very high powered um, LED flashlight with a reflector like this, or not even that, something like the GT90, I think the Lumen Top GT90, which has a very, very large head, almost like that size, or there's um, the Wubin A2 as well, enormous uh, reflector okay, to achieve the amount of throw that you might get in something of this size, for example, okay? So that's something to keep in mind. Also, you'll find that with LEP lights, you don't get any spill. So it's basically the other side of the spectrum. In terms of the TIR lights, you get a bit of spill, just enough to get by. The reflectors, you get a lot of spill, and LEPs, you get almost no spill at all. And LEPs, you get practically zero spill. So if we're speaking about the size and portability of the flashlight, you're going to get a lot more throw if you get an LEP compared to a reflector flashlight or a TIR flashlight of the same size. Okay, obviously these ones, again, like I said, they don't produce any flood, but just on throw figures, candela figures alone, these will throw a lot further. So if you're looking for a flashlight that throws a narrow beam that just goes on forever, you probably want to get one of these. If you're looking for a flashlight that has a beam that can be used in a variety of circumstances, so you can get enough flood to see what's in front of you on the ground, you know, just a larger area of focus, you probably want to go for one of these reflector flashlights. They produce a lot of flood, but they also produce a decent sized hotspot. And depending on the size of the reflector, you can really go quite far as well. Pretty much it's competitive with the LEPs, not as far as the LEPs, but again, the more throw that you want with any of these reflector flashlights, the larger the reflector. So the size consideration is gonna be a thing there. And few people want to carry around a gigantic flashlight they can throw, you know, two and a half kilometers when you can carry something around like one of these that um, throw around about the same distance. We don't have to deal with carrying around a gigantic flashlight with you. The TIR flashlights, I think, are a great in-between. So if you want a bit of both properties, for example, a bit of throw, um, you know, that, that pencil-thin LEP, that pencil, that thinner lightsaber sort of effect, but at the same time, have a bit of spill on the higher modes, the TIR flashlights is absolutely perfect for that. In terms of pricing, the reflector flashlights have been around for a really, really long time. So you can get some fantastic bargains on, on these lights. The C8 Plus goes for about $30 to $40 Australian on AliExpress. 
I think the FC12 is around the same as well, $30 to $40. Um, Convoy L8 is about $120 Australian. So fantastic value for something that throws just so far. One and a half kilometers also came with the battery as well. The M4 here, the Spiro's M4 and the Sofern IF22A, I think they sell for around $40 to $60 online so they're relatively affordable as well i think they have similar production costs to say the reflector flashlights the tir lenses have been around for a really long time as well they were initially i think used for things like uh car headlamps and stage lighting and stuff like that but they've just applied it to the flashlight uh, flashlights as well so in terms of affordability these two tir um, flashlights and the reflector flashlights you're going to get the most bang for buck out there lep technology is still relatively new and came out a few years back so to get a decent lep you're going to need to spend about 150 us dollars and above to get them not all of these companies also ship to australia if you're based in the states you should be fine so you kind of got to look around and see what's best for you i think there are ones that sell for about a hundred um about a hundred dollars us as well that you can get but they're kind of ones that uh, don't have a particular brand name on them so it's not it's not one that i would probably trust if i was gonna uh, buy an lep but again these ones here you know the next torch l10 max is a great cost effective option if you're looking for an lep that can throw up to 1.3 kilometers in distance and uh, still performs just as well as other leps that are even twice the price so you can have a look at that i've linked all these flashlights in the description as well if you want to check them out and purchase them all these flashlights take standard batteries so normally 18 650s or 21 700 cells so you don't have to go out and buy any specific cells to operate them they all usually come with their own batteries as well uh, convoy you need to specify whether you want a battery with it so they ship them with or without so it's a few extra dollars for a cell, I think it's pretty much worth it though. Charging wise, same thing as well. You know, a lot of them have a USB port or if not, they come with a battery that allows you to actually charge them separately. Uh, most of these do come with the port except for the convoys. Again, you need a separate charger to uh, charge the battery. The UIs on all of these flashlights are very different. And what I've found is with the LEP flashlights, you, they often come with very simple UIs. So usually a low, medium, high mode and a strobe mode. If anything, some of them come with tactical switches so you can activate the flashlight very quickly, turn it onto turbo. Some of them come with advanced features like this uh, tactical ring here that allows you to switch modes by uh, turning the tactical ring and also operating the switch at the back but generally speaking more simple UIs um, with these reflector flashlights and also the TIR flashlights they come with more complex UIs and some of them even come with Andural firmware but uh, for example you know you've got the convoy lights that have an ability to check the voltage of the battery you've got uh, step ramp mode you've got smooth ramp mode the l8 also has a tactical mode as well so you can activate that and press and hold the button down to uh, activate high or turbo on on uh, there's just the press of the button um you know with the fc12 you've got two buttons you've got one on the side one on the back that tactical switch on the back you can also toggle between smooth ramping and uh, step ramping you've also got a strobe mode on there a moonlight mode so um, the tactical the tir lights again quite similar uis to these other reflector flashlights as well so you've, you've often got more you've even Often they also come with a lockout mode. So something to keep in mind, I think you've got a lot more options in terms of UIs. These, uh, some of these also come with a moonlight mode, something that the LEP flashlights do not come with. And there's not really much you can do with an LEP on moonlight mode anyway. There's no spill on it. So these are more specific uh, purpose usage. In terms of practicality, 
I would recommend for someone who wants to just use a light around the house, outdoors, maybe do a bit of camping, a bit of fishing, maybe you just have a light that you just want to use outside in the backyard, I'd recommend you getting one of these ones here. So any of the reflector flashlights, especially if you're new to lights as well, you can get these for quite a reasonable price. There's a huge range of them because it's the classic design of flashlights that you have out there. You can also look into some of these TIR flashlights as well. They have excellent throw, but again, just keep in mind that they're not gonna have as much spill as your normal reflector flashlights. If you don't mind the extra size on the head, you can get the Convoy L8 and other similar larger reflector flashlights for about 80 to $120 online these also produce way more lumens than the LEP flashlights so especially these ones with the larger reflectors that just have more heat sinking abilities as well so manufacturers tend to use more high powered LEDs in these larger lights and uh, more powerful drivers whereas with the smaller flashlights generally you don't find something like an SBT90 inside so we're talking about 5000 lumens uh, 1000 lumens this one's nearly 1,600 lumens, 2,000, 1,300 lumens. And here you've got about 400, 500, and 900 lumens for comparison. So in terms of lumens, bang for buck lumens, your reflector flashlights, generally speaking, are going to give you the most value. Now, if you want something that has more of a cleaner, kind of uh, throwier beam, okay, that's still in a small package, Kind of an in-between from the reflector flashlights and the LEP flashlights. The TIR is a great go-between as well. Uh, this one comes with an SFT40 LED in here. It has amazing throw. If you're looking for a flashlight that just has the maximum throw and candela range, you want to get an LEP. There's just nothing out there that compares to them. That beam is just so clean. I find I can even use these during the daytime. LEPs are fantastic if you're looking to illuminate a particular spot um, very, very far away from a distance, maybe using some binoculars or something like that to uh, see closer. These really throw a great distance. I was also around the other day near some abandoned buildings and you can use it to actually see through the windows rather than using something like a reflector flashlight, I find that they produce too much spill and uh, you get a lot of reflections and stuff coming off. So with these ones, if you sh if you use it through a window, you just find that um, it illuminates that room quite dramatically. It's uh, quite an interesting effect. You get something similar if you're using something like uh, these TIR flashlights. Um, but yeah, you really get some amazing effects when you're using that looking through glass. The main reason why I love these LEP flashlights so much is that they are just so fun to use. It feels like you're using a lightsaber or something at night. If we forget about the practical side of LEPs, I was pretty much sold on the coolness factor of these lights more than anything else. Just to be able to pull out a light of this size from your pocket and be able to shoot a beam that's one and a half, two kilometers long, simply unheard of. You know, 10 years ago in the flashlight community, you could never find something like that. You'd have to get a gigantic flashlight and cost you thousands of dollars. And these are still pretty expensive, but I think they are coming down in price as many manufacturers start to produce their own. Make sure you check down in the description as well because I've listed all these lights down there and you're going to be able to get a bit more information and also purchase from those links as well if you want to support my channel. I hope this video was helpful for you to understand the differences, the general differences between these different types of throwers. Again, I haven't made any notes for this video, so if I've missed anything out or you have some questions, feel free to add them um, in the comments below and I'll get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, if you liked it, do me a favor and like it, uh, like the video. And if you want to see some more videos, make sure you subscribe. 522A.
FC12. C8 pass with IF22A. T10L on the left, T20L on the right. A lot more intense, as you can tell. LT Max on the right, T10O on the left. Very similar beams. The T10L has a softer edge, slightly larger, very, very slightly larger hotspot, almost imperceptible. <laughs> 